Do people like me? Do we destroy reselling for people like you? Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Commonwealth Cabin. Welcome to Commonwealth Flipper. If you're coming from Commonwealth Picker, thanks for joining us over here on the Seller Channel. I only say that because there's a bunch of new subs over there on the Picker Channel lately, and some of them trickle over here. You know, some people like to just watch people garage sale, and then some people are flippers. They're pickers and flippers. Some people collect, and so that channel gets a, quite a bit of an interesting, eclectic mix of followers, of watchers, of subscribers of lovers, of haters, of criticizers. <laughs> it gets all kinds over there. And then mostly the people that come over here are the people that are resellers, I guess. Matter of fact, that's a good question to put in the comments. Do you watch this channel? Is anybody out there? I would say just from the comments that I read and feedback, I would say 10 to 15% of people who watch this channel aren't resellers. And I think that's interesting to me. I appreciate you. That's That gives me some confidence that I'm at least worth paying attention to it's like American pickers, right? If I, you know, I know tons of people who watch American pickers who aren't pickers, who aren't flippers. They're not resellers. They're nothing. They just like old stuff. They like it. You know, maybe they're collectors. It's like the Antiques Roadshow, right? People just like to see that treasure hunt sometimes. It's why, you know, dumpster diver channels. If there was as many people dumpster diving as there are people watching dumpster diving, <laughs> there'd be nothing in dumpsters anywhere across the country. So at any rate, thanks for joining us over here. And there's a couple, you know, that's kind of one of the things I want to talk about. We're going to talk about later in the show. Do people like me, do we destroy reselling for people like you? I've seen a lot of those comments lately on the Garage Sale channel on other YouTube people's Instagrams and comments in their videos. And I think it's interesting, and I think it's worth debating. It's not worth throwing out just carte blanche right at the get-go, just saying, hey, this kind of stuff, what I do, is ruining it for all resellers. I do hear that from time to time, and we're going to discuss it in just a few minutes down the road on this video, probably when we're done showing you all the cool stuff that's sold today. Let's take a look. All right, here's a good one. I took a little bit of a chance. I can't remember the sale. I'd give you a name, but I'd probably be wrong. And then you'd be like, oh, what I watch that video for? I paid a buck for this, if I'm right. And the reason I did, it's new in the package. It's Aloha Republic made in Hawaii. This is not a brand I've ever seen before. It's certainly modern. You can tell it's got the barcode and whatever. But it was made in Hawaii. It was made in the USA. Typically, if you find shirts that are made in Hawaii, made in the USA, made in Korea even sometimes, you can find some vintage shirts. This is not vintage but it is made in Hawaii and that helps. A lot of people will search made in Hawaii or whatever. It's got the woody on the back and the surfboards and it's brand new in the package, size large. And I'm like, for a buck, I'm gonna pick this thing up. Listed it, it sold really quickly, but it sold on Bonanza, $19 plus shipping on that one. So I like that sale, happy about that. And I know a lot of folks have moved over to Bonanza. You don't really move, to be honest with you. You just sign up for Bonanza and then everything kind of gets pushed over there. I like Bonanza, not very many sales, to be honest with you. But with the amount of work you have to put in, it's definitely worth it for me. 19 bucks plus shipping, bought it for a buck. Should be around a, I don't know, 14, 15 dollar profit. Okay, here's an item where I could complain and say, uh, a stupid YouTuber out there who sells all that Liberty stuff makes it hard for me to sell Liberty stuff. But I'm that stupid YouTuber <laughs> and I'm making it hard on myself. I don't sell as much of this as I used to. But I'm not quick to cast blame out there on myself per se, although that's a part of it. And we're going to talk about that inside in just a second. But it is definitely true that there are other factors involved, and we'll talk about that too. It's not just, you know, X, Y, or Z YouTuber out there has let the cat out of the bag on this, and now nobody can sell it. That may be part of the equation, but I wouldn't take it quite so simple as that. I think there's multiple factors, and some of them may add to the benefit of having a YouTuber talking about an item. And we'll talk about that in a minute. Anyways, this one sold for $17. Free shipping. So we're not making a ton. Pay $2 free shipping though. So we're making, I don't know, eight bucks or so. This one is cool. Almost kept it for myself. Miami Daily News, Guam under fire, bomb attack, Japs bombard Manila, right there. And I think that's interesting as a headline. This is December 8th, 1941. 
And you might be like, why is that the headline on December 8th, 1941, the day after Pearl Harbor? You would think that it would be Pearl Harbor, but it's because you used to have a morning and evening edition. And so the morning edition almost certainly said this was the headline up here. The evening edition is the next attack, and that is on Manila, which of course was a, I suppose you want to call it a colony of the United States, left over after the Spanish-American War, and Manila was under attack. And I think I have another one that has that as well, and it fell, uh, and the Japanese took Manila in the Philippines until we want it back eventually. So it's the evening edition, so it probably didn't have this speech to have a little arrow. Look, it's not just YouTube people. I'm not the only one who uses arrows in my thumbnails. Look, they're giving an arrow way back in 1941 to Roosevelt right there. I wonder if you can see his, was he propped up? Was he seated? I don't know. I think he was on a platform. At any rate, I almost kept this one and framed it because it's so cool. I think I would have if it was the morning paper or maybe if it was like, um, I don't want to insult Miami, but if it was like the New York Times, the paper of record, at least back then it was. So pretty cool. 25 bucks plus shipping on that one. This one, the Nobody Saw It But Me video on the Commonwealth Picker channel. Maybe some of you just saw that one and then just subbed over here. Now you've seen this one over here. This one was on that video. And immediately after that video aired, this thing sold. So you didn't say that you're a viewer, so maybe it's just coincidence. I'm not quite sure, but this has been listed for a week or so. And I have a feeling maybe somebody who saw it. If it's if that's the case, leave a comment right here. But somebody said, hey, that's the uh, jacket that Rocky wore. <laughs> I think that was Rocky too, wasn't it? Electrolux. I don't think he was wearing a vacuum cleaner jacket, but that thing is cool. I love the embroidery on it. I guess this was given to salesmen because the guy I bought this off of was a salesman. And I think I got it for $5, sold for $39, free shipping. Oh, no, excuse me, plus shipping on that one. Bridgeport, USA, definitely vintage, made in the USA. $39 plus shipping for that, paid five bucks. You know, I've sold tons of Electrolux stuff over the years. I've never seen any kind of product like that. It's a pretty rare one, I suppose, if, you know, salesmen are getting it. But I like it, and I'm happy for that sale. That's a pretty cool one. Still selling records. I think it's slowed down since <laughs> since the weekend, but looks like we have four going out today and none of them are high priced, but I'm going to grab those. I think most of them I've listed pretty recently and then I want to show you something that I'm going to talk about inside, but I want to have this picture in your head first. And I pulled up Crazy Lamp Lady's channel right here and she does mostly glass, although she does some other things. And I'm going to refer to that in there. I mean, look at the view totals here, right? Look at how many people are watching. And I want to refer to this channel among some other channels later on about people, quote unquote, ruining reselling. And we'll talk about that in a minute. But let's pick these out first. So these are pretty recent in here. And I'm going to see if I can just recognize them. That's not it. Sister Sledge is one of them. Let's see if I can find some other ones and then we'll come back in a minute. Straight between the eyes. That sounds right. Was that one of them? I don't know if it was or not. Rare Earth was one of them for sure. That one sold. Let's see. I think there's a total of four. I might be able to find them all. I can't even remember the names now. There's one. Mary Poppins sold. That's a good one. You know, it's not in great shape, but folks, sometimes they don't even care about the records. They're just looking at the covers. And so if you have covers sometimes that you think are valuable, even with no record or the records damaged, the covers will sell because somebody might put that in a, a Disney room or something. You just never know. All right, I don't even remember the other one. So let's go look at these first. Let me look at the prices. All right, Mary Poppins, $8 plus shipping. I think there was some condition issues. I kind of underpriced it. But, you know, like I said, even if it doesn't play great, a lot of people sometimes, they don't even care. They're just looking for a cover that would look decent. You know, that cover's not even perfect, but you put it in a frame, it's going to look just fine. Rare Earth. I don't even know why I sold this one other than it's just a funky looking album right there. $5 plus shipping, so I'm not making but maybe $3 on that one. three fifty dollars something like that. Sister Sledge sold, and I don't remember the price. And that one is in good condition, so for $11 plus shipping all right the other one is rainbow straight between the eyes is that the one i was looking at i can't remember y'all you have to help me out 
Let's see here. Yeah, that was it. I had it the whole time. Rainbow straight between the eyes. I'm not familiar with this. Sometimes you look at the songs and you'll recognize some of them. All right, y'all tell me in the comments, what's a song I might recognize off of that? That's a cool looking cover. Right between the eyes. There you go. $8 plus shipping. Two more items, both from drawers named after people that are ruining eBay. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Don't take that out of context now. All right, here we go. These are the Airborne Fizzes. I saw a box full of this stuff and some other stuff. And I checked the expirations on. I'm like, yeah, this stuff will... Yeah, we got enough time. Sell them. And I paid a couple bucks for the whole box. This one sold for $14 plus shipping. Strawberry flavor and maybe pomegranate, I think, is what it was. So not a bad sale, but everything in that box should make us like 40, 50 bucks. And this is the kind of stuff that people don't often pay attention to that oftentimes sells and can make you some money, which is a good reason why it's in the part-time picker box. Because he's one of the folks that kind of thinks outside the box a little bit. And now his way of thinking has got people inside the box. The outside the box sellers are now commonplace for some folks. Next one is from one of the OG eBay ruiners right here, Cincinnati picker. Although I will say that he ha I've never seen him sell these. I know he sells Scrabble board game pieces. And the market on those has declined, but it's not necessarily because of YouTube resellers. It's for another reason. Because people are manufacturing them overseas now in China. And so if you're going to make crafts out of, say, Scrabble tile pieces, and you don't care if they're original or if they're vintage or anything... And you'll just buy these giant lots that are made for crafting. So, at any rate, these are aggravation. If you remember not too long ago, last week I sold the aggravation board alone for $11 plus shipping. The marbles sold alone for $11 plus shipping. So that's $22 plus shipping, minus fees, and the dollar that it cost me to buy it, or $0.50. Cents. You know, there's about $15, $14 profit in two sales, in easy, easy sales. Just make sure you get the real marbles. You can sell the plastic ones, but it's not really worth it. The real marbles for the game are good, and there's four in each is what goes. And this one also had the dice, which is nice to have. I don't necessarily sell these with it. Sometimes I say this isn't included unless you ask for it, although I can do it. You know, this is easy because you can put these in one of these little bags down here. Just grab one of these, put it in here. If they're marbles and dice, maybe put it in a little baggie first because these will rip. And then you don't have to do that. But whatever. Either way, it won't be that big of a difference. Turner, you got a homeschool hustler store sale today. Let's see that thing right there. Put it down a little uh, bit so we can see its eyeballs. What is that thing? A Cheshire cat. A Cheshire cat. That's a exactly what you got. Cheshire cat. I like it. And that thing sold. Blue Ridge Mama bought that for 2 bucks. Sold for $16. $16.95. Plus shipping so we about 11 dollar profit on that one definitely enough for you to do what save a dollar spend a dollar and donate a dollar and you got it you want to show them how it works it makes a little noise and then it starts to talk doesn't it and that's mm -hmm. sterling holloway's voice that's uh winnie the pooh and call you can be any hope at all if you're going to be like that the mouse and aristocats the stork and dumbo <laughs> Turner is doing reviews for his own channel over there, the Homeschool Hustler Store channel. And so... <laughs> All right, turn it off, buddy. And so he wants y'all to go over there and check out his channel, the Homeschool Hustlers, and he's going to start doing little toy reviews for different toys in here that sell. And he wants to play with them and then put them on there. He's practicing, because what do you want to do when you get older? Be a star. <laughs> Turn, you're not supposed to say people think you're a nut out there. Be a star. That's what you want to do. I want to be a star. You're already a star. Look at all these people oh, yeah. watching you. You know how many yeah. people know who Turner is? A oh. thousand. <laughs> a thousand, yes. Yeah, somewhere around that, buddy. Thanks for joining us today. Bye. Have just a few sales, two sales actually. This is a combo in here. Blue Ridge Mama listed them. They're Reagans. And she's been selling a lot of stuff on Mercari lately. This, however, is not on Mercari. This one was on eBay. Uh, I think just under $13 uh, total shipped. Now, that'll give you an idea how thrifty Blue Ridge Mama is. I just dropped them off at the Goodwill. But they're really light, really light. They're sweatshirts, but not really. This isn't even really a sweatshirt. And so they're going to go out just over 12 ounces, I hate to say. And that's okay. You know, let's say it's 550 
three dollars in fees there's eight you make it's like a four dollar profit i don't know to me probably not worth it i'd just say take him to the goodwill but she was already doing the sorting figuring out what was worth it what wasn't and she, she did this so a lot of people have asked how to get to her store i put that in the description below and uh uh, I just figured saying Blue Ridge Mama, but I don't know if you can look up stores. Let me know out there. Can you look up stores on Mercari like you can on eBay? So some folks couldn't find it. So it's Blue Ridge Mama on Mercari. Just knocked over an enemy in there. <laughs> All right, so here we go. This one is anth an anthropology brand, Tabitha, I guess. And she picked this up. This was actually on camera. This is one of the very first videos that Blue Ridge Mama appeared on a long time ago. And we were, it was, I think it was, it was our first time in an Airbnb or something like that. I'll put it right here and you can check that out. Nobody watched it back then. I don't think anybody's watched it. It's like 200 watches or something views. At any rate, we picked this up at a thrift store. We were trying to pay for our trip, our little weekend away, trying to pay for our weekend away by going thrifting. And we did, we definitely did. And it was fun. We had a good time. We're hoping to do that a little bit more often in the future as well. And this one sold, took a long time, but it did sell. It sold for $26 plus shipping. Anthropology is a great brand, but they have multiple brands inside of that brand. So Tabitha apparently is one of them. I don't know. It's six petite. If it was a little bigger, it could have brought a little bit more money. But we got for that. All right. So that's the topic of conversation, kind of, sort of, is can, can certain YouTubers or, or maybe not even YouTubers, maybe on Instagram, can you ruin a particular item on eBay? And I think if we're totally honest, the answer sometimes can be yes. Like I talked about the Liberty University, right? There's such a limited market that it's not really going to increase or decrease very rapidly. Even if they, you know, I don't know, win a national championship in lacrosse or something. <laughs> I'm just making something up. It's not going to change that much. So that kind of local market can be affected, I think. And I think the global market can be too. You know, I think of Rally Roots and, and a couple of brands that they, they just mentioned and, and it kind of got saturated. So it does happen. But I think on whole, I think a lot of other factors play much, much, a much bigger deal in it than this. Let me give you a couple of examples. So I've talked about John Cincinnati Picker. I did it out there for a minute, you know. It's not like him telling everybody, hey, you know, you can sell sports equipment for a lot of money. It's not like that's ruined the market. I mean, that's a need. That's something people will always want. There's a limited supply of older stuff, obviously. And that's just not going to change. When things dwindle in supply, I, you know, I think of uh, John used to sell uh, TVs like I do still. I don't know why. Old CRT TVs. And I don't think he does that much anymore, but... I think of Craigslist Hunter years ago talking about VCRs. I mean, I was selling VCRs. It didn't change. Matter of fact, I think the market went up. And there's, think about it this way. There's two, two effects here. One is just the overwhelming, there are millions of people. There are not, you know, 30 million resellers. There's an awful lot of them, but there aren't 30 million. And we're selling in America to 350 million people. We're selling to people in Canada. Now we're selling to people all over the world. I think a much more important factor is just getting in and doing the hard work of it than somebody spoiling it. Let's take some other examples. So let's take, uh, I mean, garage flips, shed flips. He's not going to ruin the collectible market. I mean, matter of fact, if he's doing anything, he's increasing it. Take Gary V, if you know who Gary V is out there, and this explosion of sports card collecting. That didn't happen necessarily because of Gary V. He may have played a role in it. But there's not going to be a massive exodus out of it. If anything, it, it caused a new market to exist. Look look at this guy over here. I sold these things for years before I did YouTube. For years. Now, I didn't find a massive amount. And when I started doing YouTube, I sold 2,000 of them. Guess what? I'm out. I mean, I'm not completely out. Obviously, there's a bunch right there. And I'll sell one every once in a while. But look on, go look on eBay. And there's somebody out there selling them right now. But they're not selling them for 10 bucks a pop like I did years and years ago, or eight bucks a pop. They're selling them for like $18, I think, auction plus shipping on eBay. And it's, you know, we created this market. All of us created this market. And I think sometimes, you know, go back to the beginning of advertising and, and marketing, you have to create a need for somebody. 
you need that, you know, and I, of course, you know, of course you can't sell on eBay and you can't sell successfully without owning one of these, of course. So it's part of a, you know, resellers own this. It's like an image thing now. And that created a market. Now it's not a huge market, but it's a little bit of a market and there's limited supply. So there you go. There's a couple examples. Now, some of the other items out there, I've, we talked about crazy lamp lady out there earlier. You know, you go back, if you're a seller of glass and you go back five years, you couldn't sell glass. If it was the last thing, going to these antique malls, you couldn't sell it. And now there's a market. I'm not saying she created the market, but people like her. She did create quite a bit of a following for herself and people now collect that didn't collect. People like over the years, you know, and there's so many thrifting 101 that look back. This market was ready to be expanded upon because people look back at their childhood. It's like my crazy obsession with Tupperware. Well, you know what? That Tupperware bowl, the blue one and the orange one and all that stuff. I ate cereal out of that bowl every day for 15 years, right? And so I wanted that bowl and that's why I buy that stuff. And that's human nature. As we get to a certain, whatever it is, how many, you know, odd ends, trinkets, whatever it is. You know, I used this when I was a kid. I had this blanket when I was a kid. And so shows like this, in my opinion, can create that influx of product that decreases the prices of something. But I think much more often, it actually creates a market. Let's take some of the other ones I talk about. So I've talked about the purple ab roller. I felt like I used to be the only one selling it. I obviously wasn't. I would see other people out there doing it. But the market on those has gone up, not down. Those prices are about as high as they've ever been. The Super Shooter, which I talked about forever, and, and so many of you have now sold them. I find, I find it a little bit harder to find them, to be honest with you. But the market on them went crazy at Christmas. I mean, used ones were selling for 100 bucks. I mean, new ones I saw up, at, I put it on a video, that are like $250 or something. So there's certain products, you know, the Blue Line Panasonic that, that Pete talked about forever ago that I talk about. That's still got a great market. And there's tons of people who watch people like me or watch any of these YouTubers out there or watch your Instagrams and the bolos that you post that aren't resellers. And they see something and you're like, oh yeah, I had that when I was a kid. And then the market expands because they have their memory has to be triggered and see it. And there's tons of people who watch the Garage Sale channel at least for me anyways, that aren't resellers. They tell me they're not resellers, just like people watch Antiques Roadshow. And they'll see that. There's tons of people who buy from, they're not resellers. And so I think that there is possibly a negative effect, but I think overall there's a positive effect for resellers. There's so many items that I sell that I would, here's an example. People give me credit for selling the lawn chair. Oh, he sells the lawn chair. He uh-uh. I didn't, I saw that on a YouTube channel. I saw it on a YouTube channel a long, long time. I saw it on Pete Craigslist Hunter's YouTube channel. There are things that I have seen other resellers sell that I now sell. And I think overall, for the people who watch these shows, it is a net plus. There may be different categories that may be negatively impacted, but it is a net plus. The more you can remind people, at least as eBay sellers, of their past, the more they're going to buy. And the other side of eBay, which is necessity, if it's a necessity, if it's something that is useful, it's going to sell forever. It's going to sell forever because people are cheap. People are thrifty. And if you can buy it on eBay cheaper, they're going to buy it on eBay cheaper. Some people are anyways. Some people are going to buy it for convenience. eBay's expanding. And I don't just don't mean eBay. All of these platforms are expanding because more and more and more people are buying online. And so how many of you out there have seen, unless you're a specialty niche, have seen your, your sales go down over the last five years? Almost nobody. The sales are going up. One more product that I have talked about ever since I've been on YouTube is Revereware. And I know some other folks on YouTube have been talking about it quite a bit lately. Not just Revereware, but copper bottom pots and pans. I've been selling that stuff for years. The market on it is as good as it's ever been. Now, you could argue that that's because of COVID, and you may be right. Same thing with a super shooter, right? More people are cooking at home. They want quality things. You know, who knows? But there are factors that are much, much bigger than what we're talking about. So 
I do think in certain cases, especially things that are very niche, it may affect in a negative way. But overall, it is a net plus in every way I can think of um, to have people on YouTube that are talking about, not just YouTube, but Instagram and all these different places. Knowledge is power. And I think the more knowledge you get, the better you get at what you're doing. And all of us are growing together. So at any rate, but we do appreciate you dropping by here every day. And we thank you very much for coming by, learning with us and teaching us as well at the same time. We'll go back up there for something, who knows what. And we'll see you next time. All right, you got another sale. This is from Lori from Florida. And you know what she said? She said, thank y'all for the great information. Do you think people in Florida say y'all? <laughs> do you say y'all? Yes. Yes, we do. And Mama says all y'all, <laughs> doesn't she? She talks about it. She says all y'all got to pick up your mess. That's what Mama said. What did Lori buy? One, we get things moving shirt. Two, animogs. And a we get things moving sticker. <laughs> you got it. You got it. And you're so smart. We have been selling those yellow shirts. And I was so wrong. <laughs> all right, baby. Love you. Bye. And don't forget to get your stickers at commonwealthbigger.com.